Hi guys, welcome back to the farm in Thailand with Toonin Lee. Today is our second instalment of our Moringa project. We're doing cuttings today. I've been doing quite a few over the last few days. And on the first of this month, we also uh, actually planted about a hundred. Uh, there's still lots and lots to plant. So I'm gonna run you through a few basics of how we do it and why we do it and uh, give you a few little pointers um, so that if you want to try growing them as well, not necessarily just in Thailand, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll have some degree of success rather than just throwing them in the ground. We won't be taking any more cuttings off this tree, which featured in the first video in the playlist, uh, mainly because I've already pillaged it. Um, I would like to get a big chopper out and uh, hack this right down to about four or five foot, uh, but that will have to wait. So I've only just really come down here to get hold of my uh, saw, long handled saw, uh, and then we're gonna go to the second tree that we've got. So while I'm having a wander down here to the next tree, uh, we'll just run through why we're doing cuttings rather than growing from seed. Well, in fairness, we're growing from seed as well. So I'll cover that in the next Moringa video in the playlist. Um, but the advantages of doing it by cutting one, it's cheap, as long as you've already got your Moringa tree. So this is the one we're going to do. Uh, it's, it's simple. You, you just cut them and quick bit of prep work and then you shove them in. Uh, and it, it's, it's quicker, not just putting them in, but they reach maturity a lot quicker than growing from seed. They're also clones from the, uh, the tree that you've taken them from. So if you've got good stock, which these are apparently, uh, well, and we know that they grow well here then take advantage of that um, so why are we doing from seed as well well I like to see what what difference there is but also we haven't got enough moringa trees we're really serious about growing this giving it a good go so uh, we'll be doing both the trees need a good trim down anyway a good hard pruning um, and we're not going to waste the seed, so we're going to we're going to grow from them. I know you can press them and make the oil out of those. Um, pure moringa oil is, is is fascinating stuff, but for now we want to get loads and loads planted up. So that's the idea. Uh, I'm just going to cut a few because I've already got a lot back at the house that I've just taken out of hormones. So uh, I just want to get one that I'll, I'll show you how to chop it up and. Uh, prepare it for for planting I think what I'll be doing is taking this one that's coming out at an angle over the uh, the road the guy that drives past here he he just pulls branches off anyway that, that uh, goes over his road is a bit funny like that so we're gonna whip this off uh, there'll be plenty of leaves to use for food for the poultry and uh, I think that'll demonstrate quite well how you trim these up and prepare them get, them, get them ready for planting. Right, we have our two cuttings. Um, just a quick one for you. When you're cutting off the, the main tree, obviously you don't want to cause too much damage. Um, so where we've cut it away here, it's a nice clean cut. Uh, a lot of people use a hatchet, which is, it, it's all right, but it tends to break up uh, where you cut through. So uh, I prefer to use a saw. Uh, where at all possible and don't cut too close to the main tree so you can see here we've left quite a little bit away from there the, the node there it's uh, and then that will regrow you'll get an amazing amount of growth from there okay let's get these two bits back a good sign that your moringa is healthy is by checking the leaves and making sure that they're nice and vibrant these are almost a fluorescent green. I don't know whether I'll get the light behind there. I don't know whether the camera's doing that justice. Um, but it's like a fluorescent lime green. Okay, let's get these back and uh, run through the basics with you. It's really, really hot. It's only uh, seven o'clock in the morning, but the heat of the day is upon us already. And uh, the good thing is, at the moment, it's perfect growing conditions for just about everything because every late afternoon or early evening, we're getting a good downpour. So you're getting the, 
the warmth and good growing temperature daytime, good humidity, and then evening everything's getting a good drop of uh, water. So taking cuttings and uh, transplanting stuff is a perfect time. You see people's cassava there, it's all, it's all picking up now. Doing this Billy No Mates this morning. Toon's doing breakfast. Well, she should be. If she's sitting on her backside, when they get back, there'll be trouble. Hard life, innit, Spoon? It's right, you don't have to get up. All right, girl. Useless dog. Right, welcome to the Moringa office. <laughs> it's the uh, day after the night before, which was Toon's birthday, so uh, we went out for a bite to eat last night, and someone's looking a little bit jaded, isn't you, dear? A little bit. Unbelievably, this beast will grow, and it's quite often the case, the bigger is the better. Uh, the only thing is, you have to dig a mahoosive deep hole uh, to make sure that you get good stability with that. What I've got planned with this one is, though, I will chop that in half. But a lot of people, they'll dig a three foot hole and uh, pop that in there. Um, when I first started looking into this, it did look as if people were planting them too deep. But what you'll have to remember is, say if it was that much under the soil, this then becomes the tap root. It doesn't just send out small roots. The actual bit here becomes the main tap root and that goes quite deep. Okay, so obviously if you can go with this, sort, you get hold of this sort of size, that's brilliant. Um, because you're not going to have to wait very long at all to, uh, to start being able to crop that. However, you're not going to be able to cut many of these off your tree in your garden, are you? So uh, that's going to have a, uh, you're going to have a limited amount of that that's available. Same really for this sort of size. So a bit thicker than your wrist. Um, this is, if I could cherry pick any size in abundance, it would be this one. Uh, and then you can see the sort of difference brilliant I'm very very happy with that as with these if you look there it's about the width of my thumb and people tend not to grow them if they're smaller than that however because we need about 50,000 I will be planting some this size and I've seen some people do that and it's worked as well so I won't be using this one though because you can see it's it's not very fresh in there and then anything that's that sort of size, forget it guys, there's, there's no point. Lengthwise, you want at least, I would say, two and a half to three feet because you need a foot under the soil. Now before I'm going to start trimming this up to uh, use the cuttings, Toon's just going to pick the good stuff to uh, include with our breakfast. Now, the leaves are by far and away the most nutritious and beneficial part of the tree so take advantage of those the older ones we'll still be keeping and uh, using our shredder over there to uh, mince them up with our rosette water lettuce for our poultry nice young and fresh very soft and then that's uh, that's like eating wood that one and the stalks as well you can very very fibrous where it's easier nice and soft so they're the ones that you want so this branch a lot of people wouldn't use uh, we are going to and we'll do it about three foot or so you can see the, the leaf nodes there so don't go too close to them and just cut it on an angle easy if it was bigger Don't put too close to there, leave about half an inch and snip that off. Now, some people will just shove that straight into the ground. Some people will smear honey over that. Or like us, you can pop it into some hormone. Now the hormone that we use isn't a powder, it comes in a, in a liquid form and you just dilute it with the water. Uh, you leave your cuttings in uh, about, about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. You're supposed to take them out and let them dry naturally. You'll notice when you cut Moringa, the sap is in, it's extremely sticky. I don't know if that's got anything to do with why it's, it's so good. Mm. 
ไม่แน่สิไปแล้วทุกอย่างพร้อมแล้วเราจะเริ่มต้นด้วยการใส่5ฟิวเจอร์ใหญ่ที่เราได้ใส่ลงไปในฐานของฐานและนั่นเป็นความแตกต่างของการเติบโตของพวกเราทุกอย่างมีลักษณะ5ฟิวเจอร์ใหญ่ที่โตขึ้นไปในฐานของฐานของพวกเราทุกอย่างมีลักษณะ5ฟิวเจอร์ใหญ่ที่โตขึ้นไปใน It's a bit hot for digging holes, but I've got five deep holes dug, and brought a couple of buckets of our infamous poultry poo out here. So this is a mixture of quail and chicken muck, and you can see you need some quite quite deep holes to pop these in. Good shot. This bit of ground that we've chosen is. Uh, Quite poor soil on the top. This was actually uh, excavation earth from when we had the uh, fish ponds dug. Half a bucket of muck in each. That's it. And Toon's trusty tool, which I can't pronounce. Job. 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 Now, because we're in the the full-on rainy season now, you don't have to water these in. If you're in quite a dry location, you might want to dig a, a, a circular moat round them, and then when you water them, you don't water the actual. Well, I suppose you call it a stem now, but the trunk, I suppose. Uh, don't water that. You just water the the, the soil around it. Uh, you can stabilise this by putting stones in there as well, some big rocks. But uh, our soil is quite stony anyway, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. These trees do rot if their roots are constantly wet, so just be aware of that. Almost there. Bit more misses. Bit more. Okay. Okey cokey. Mud, mud. A lot of ants this time of year. We'll just show you here what some people do differently. They'll get a knife and uh, they'll shave or just scratch the bark, rough it up a little bit, uh, or you can pulverize it. Just get a hammer on there and start to break the fibres and get to split them up a little bit at the base and put them in. Um, but from what I've seen, uh, a lot of people are just doing it this way with the with dry hormone, and uh, they're having good results. So uh, there's a couple of things that you can try. Like I say, you don't have to use hormone. You can put them straight in, or you can use honey. If you use honey round here, it'd be uh, very expensive. It's not very common round here. Honey. How's your hangover? That'll learn you. You can see our our soil isn't really soil. It's a it's a mixture of earth and small stone. Kampang Pet, where we live, is uh, this province is renowned for this sort of soil type. It's not easy to get things growing around here. You can see we've got a few coconut trees dotted around that we've put in. And, uh, three. We've, Managed to get three that have taken some teak as well, some very slow growing. Got Thailand called uh, Mysak trees, we've got those to take. Uh, so they should be mature when we're about 95 years old. But your moringa is incredibly quick growing. Two out of five done. You're getting the hang of this, missus. Two more guys. Two more to go.
Let's give you a quick close-up of our what I call moon rock. All that stuff. Not great, but I guarantee you, Moringa, it's a hardy bugger and uh, it'll cope just fine. Last but not least, our biggest one. Jobs are good and okay, that's all five in. Uh, I'm gonna go back and have a good rest now because uh, it's just getting too hot. And then later this afternoon, uh, I'll be doing the long rows of cuttings, which will be different to this. And we're off. So the footage might be a little bit shaky for a while because I've had to switch to head cam or nogging cam. So I might be bouncing around. So now we're off to uh, put the smaller cuttings in. And um, we're gonna plant these differently in rows and close together. Uh, this is going to be for maximum leaf production, whereas the big ones that we put in earlier, they're for growing the tree much larger and for collecting the seed pods to either to eat or sell the fresh ones or to collect the seed to press for oil or to sell the seed or to grow seed ourselves. It is so hot. I didn't have a break in the end. I just had my electrolyte and uh we're off again right then like i said we are in the rainy season and middle of last night we had a massive downpour here's the first row that i put in this these went in five days ago so that would have been the first of june uh, you can see we've, i've mounded the soil up quite a lot and the main reason being is because when we do get these downpours we do get the standing water so if you imagine if I had just dug holes at ground level, a couple of foot deep, they would now be sitting in a load of water. So that's why they've been put in like this. Now you see a lot of these sticks or cuttings rather, they're, they're, they're quite small, but rule of thumb, I think they'll be all right. We have got some that are a little bit smaller but uh, we'll see how they go. Like I said, if they don't take, we'll just put another one in. Now you might be thinking, bloody hell Lee, what are you doing? Growing trees so close together. They're not gonna be like trees, guys. These are gonna be about four foot high maximum and just like a, a bush. Now, a lot of places that do grow this intensively, grow these closer together than this. Uh, you could probably get them another two in here okay and then they'll grow two rows alongside each other so that's for maximum leaf production moving over here these are slightly larger cuttings that we've put in and we've put them into a reformed old cassava bed what had happened around here uh, the rains were anticipated so everyone threw the cassava sticks in and the rains never came or we got very very limited rainfall and nearly everyone's cassavas perished. So there were only a few plants that had survived in here. I transplanted those into areas um, that were a little bit more moisture retentive and uh, they've, they've taken quite well. So there's, there's another couple of empty rows here. Uh, there's, a few, there's a few odds and sods growing in there cassava wise. They're gonna get pulled out and we're gonna, we're gonna plant these up. These are just gonna be in single, single rows. Uh, and then over here, from now on, there's only one row in between each row of eucalyptus. So this is gonna be a double row of Moringa down here. So it's just really trying different things. Like I said, over here, they're quite small cuttings. Uh, the second lot, they're bigger cuttings, but a single row here. We're gonna have a mixture of cuttings and a double row. And then of course, what you saw earlier this morning, way back over there, they're the big ones that are gonna grow, hopefully, into a full-size tree. Right, and enough bloody blah let's, uh, let's make a start. I'm not gonna be doing the whole lot today. I'll bloody keel over, so uh, I'll just put half a dozen in or so. That'll give you an idea. And then the next video will be an update on uh, how they've taken or not.
it's so hot and I, I can't wear my Texican hat because it's a uh, I've obviously got the video camera on top of me and uh Toon can't help she's hung over from last night okie koki now what I would do like I did over on that row I would normally put a line down and do all the holes in one go but for the sake of this video I'm just going to put the first couple in just so you can see how I'm doing it and then uh, the next video will be how they've taken or not right then so we're going to do two side by side this soil is a lot lot better um, for anyone that's been watching the channel for a while now this is the soil where we put a lot of rice straw in here and uh, that's getting on, must be getting on for about nine months ago now and it's broken down beautifully it's been tracted in as well before the uh, the rows were, were cut up for or shaped rather for the cassava so it's broken down a tree so not all the soil is uh, is crap on the land it is improving but it takes time and effort we're not using any chemicals remember that'll do for a minute easy isn't it easy gardening can't see what all the fuss is about so again we've just uh, dipped them in hormone let them dry out pop them straight in and uh, no requirement for any manure or anything like that and then remember we are in the wet season these rows do fill it with water if you've got a huge area to do just get someone to run the tractor down and mound all this soil up and then just run along and you could just actually push your sticks in like the cassara if they've dug they've dug deep enough and your soil's nice and soft you can just grow them like cassava sticks if you can push them in far enough look at that soil so happy with that it was terrible when we first moved here people not been feeding the land and so much chemical use it looks super high I know but don't worry as soon as you get a rain this will be about half half the height this is about the only weed that's a pain in the ass it's like a it's like wire this stuff but everything else comes out really easily look at my tilth have some of that why 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 some do so many farmers spray these with chemicals when they just look at the, the whole thing just pulls straight out and that's just scraping it it's a, it's an absolute no-brainer and then just leave it and it will just rot down anyway look nearly all soft leaf weeds and the root systems come out so easy once we get a little bit of rain yeah I know that's a bit more like wire okay piece of piss absolutely easy just time and effort and a lot lot safer for you than spraying a load of chemicals not just the spraying of it but obviously in the future as well I mean if you're gonna grow a health product what the hell are you doing spraying bloody chemicals on your your produce anyway it's uh it's just bloody stupid in my book but i know it's maximized profit so i shouldn't speak like that maybe my swede's melting it is really hot but i want to get this video done and get it on there we've had a lot of interest just from the few posts we've put on our facebook and uh and obviously with the last video that we did uh, here on youtube so there you go so the next video you'll see all of this planted and it'll be a few weeks down the line hopefully we can see a little bit of growth here now if you're still a bit of a septic skeptic like i used to be about moringa and, and, and other plants that are supposed to be super healthy for us um just just stay tuned and there's, there's another few snippets uh that hopefully be a bit of an eye opener for you 
uh, on, on how good this stuff is and, and, and why, even if we couldn't, can't grow any ourselves, guys, why, why we should be taking some of it either as a supplement or if we can get, get hold of some fresh stuff. But certainly if we can get one or two plants in our gardens, uh, you don't need a lot of room for it. Remember, I know it is a tree, but you keep it nice and short like a bush and you'll have more than enough uh, fresh leaves for you to, to, to include into your diet. A bit of good news, we have now got an affiliate uh, supplier for Moringa supplement uh, just at the moment, just for the UK. So apologies for you guys that are still waiting in the, the, the US and Thailand that have asked, um, asked about if we could supply some for you. Uh, it is 100% pure and it is organic as well. So you are getting the proper stuff. There's no fillers in it or anything like that. You know, the, the, a lot of the stuff that you see uh, when you when you start asking questions, um, these companies that offer affiliates and that, you just got to be careful. There's there's quite a bit of crap that comes out of certain countries. And, um, you know, even if you don't use our link, then uh, make sure you get a proper one. You can get some cheap stuff off eBay and I'm not knocking eBay. You can get some quite cheap, cheap stuff, uh, but generally speaking, you get what you pay for, and it, it, it's probably going to be that brown, crappy moringa, not that fluorescent green. Well, it could still be old, crappy moringa, just with the colorant in there. So just make sure that you read the ingredients. It should be 100% pure moringa. There's no need for anything else to go in there, like fillers and stuff, uh, or colorants, any other additives like that. Just bin it off. If you're going for capsules, uh, that, that's great, but if you're vegetarian or vegan, make sure that the capsules are in line with that because a lot aren't, guys. Okie dokie, thanks for watching as always, and hopefully the next time you, you tune in, um, we'll have some greenery to show you. Cheers, guys, take care, and uh, ta-da for now. Dense. Gram for gram, Moringa leaf powder has seven times more vitamin C than an orange. It has four times more vitamin A than carrots. It has four times more calcium than milk, and it has three times more potassium than bananas. It also has three times more iron than spinach, and three times more vitamin E than almonds. And it also has two times the protein of yogurt which is extremely cool because that's very rare that you find in a leafy green plant so as you can see all these things that we've come to know as extremely dense in uh, one vitamin um, or a mineral moringa actually blows them all out of the water and it's one leaf so it's very very cool it's extremely good for detoxification. Think about how that mashed up seed purifies water. The leaves do the same thing in your body, okay? They purify it of those impurities, okay? So it's extremely detoxifying. The leaves also contain all the essential amino acids, so it's great for building muscle. It's great for your body and very easily digestible. Um, the fact that it's a leafy green protein source is phenomenal. These are very hard to find, okay? So if you can find a good quality plant-based green protein source, that's phenomenal because it's also alkalizing, okay? Green plants are extremely alkalizing, and obviously alkalizing is good because our bodies become acidic over time, but they operate much better when they're alkaline. They're also now um, proving how many antioxidants this plant has, which also makes it great for anti-aging. So as you can see, the leaves in this powder, there's more and more things coming out every day that Moringa supports. Moringa leaf powder milled down. You can take this, you can put it into baking, you can put it into smoothies, you can sprinkle it on top of uh, salads and on foods. You can make tea out of it. That's what most people do is they'll just put this uh, powder in and make a tea out of it. Um, that's one of the best ways that you can actually use it. Capsules uh, should only be 100% um, Moringa leaf powder in a capsule. If there's any other fillers in there, that's not what you want. So make sure you get pure 100% Moringa leaf powder capsules. Um, the oil, um, if it's pure oil, this stuff is great. You can use it on your skin. It's extremely, extremely moisturizing and good for your skin. Okay, We talked about the anti-aging and all the antioxidants in there. That stuff's great for your skin. So some, some things to consider here, and these are pretty standard with all the supplements out there, but how is it grown, okay? Is it grown organically? 
Is it not grown organically? Unfortunately, right now, the vast majority of Moringa is grown in India. And it's not to say that there aren't some good farms in India, but statistically and traditionally over time, the products that come out of India, and especially um, the nutritional products that come out of India, have had a very, very poor quality control. And it's the same with Moringa. You'll see Moringas that come out of India that are almost brown. Okay, Your Moringa should be a bright vibrant green just like you see here it should be that color up top that bright vibrant green okay if it's brown that's not a good moringa that means it's dead okay <laughs> so you're gonna want to make sure it's green so how is it grown where is it grown how is it processed if it's processed at high heat that's not good okay that's a quicker way to process moringa because you can dry it out really quick and then you can mill it and you can be done with it but traditionally and the way to get the best moringa you can is you have to slow dry the moringa leaves in a dark room or in the shade why because the sunlight will zap the nutrients out of it so it takes longer but it's better for you long term how is it delivered we're talking about is it a hundred percent pure powder or are there fillers in it it doesn't matter if you buy a Moringa product that's half as cheap if it's, uh, if it's a dead product that comes from India because you're going to get nothing out of it. Spend a little bit of extra money, get a quality, organically grown, top quality Moringa. <laughs>